can begin. Archana? Yes, Dunash. Can begin, eh? Guru Maharaj, Facebook Live gentle reminder, Guru Maharaj. What? Facebook, Facebook, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yeah it's open now. Okay, thanks, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachyate Shatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare We're recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book and this evening we're on chapter number 36 Kamsa sends Akrura for Krishna. So the title of the chapter is related to the second half of this chapter, but the first half of the chapter we will hear about Krishna killing a demon named Aristasura. So everybody in Vrindavan always was thinking about Krishna. And they remembered the pastimes of Krishna. But even though Vrindavan is such a holy place, sometimes because it's in the material world, sometimes also demons will come there and disturb the peaceful atmosphere. So we know King Kamsa was a great demon and he had many demon friends who had powers, mystic powers and they could take terrible forms. So one time there was a demon named Aristasura and he took the form of a, a bull, you know, a male cow, and it was so very, very huge. And he had big horns, big long curved horns on his head. And his tail was up in the sky, up in the clouds. And the, the, the bull in India, they have a hump on the back. So that hump on the back, it was like a mountain, it was so big. 
ล้วก็กระทิงที่อินเดียเนี่ยเขาจะมีเหมือนกับมีเหมือนกับเหมือนกับไอหลังตรงเนี่ยซึ่งมันใหญ่มาก So this Aristasura demon, he came into the village where Lord Krishna was living with all the cowherd people, and when they saw this bull coming in, everybody was afraid, and they all ran away. They were all in fear. <laughs> When the demon came in, it was like the whole earth planet was shaking and trembling, like there was an earthquake. And the demon was making a loud noise. It was roaring, making very loud sounds, frightening everyone. All the cows ran away. And some of the cows were were pregnant, and even some of the ladies who were pregnant, they had miscarriages. Just to hear the sound of that bull was so frightening that they get they miscarried. They had a miscarriage. And the body of the bull was so big and strong; it was like a cloud was covering its body. They thought that they thought this bull was like a mountain, so the clouds were coming over the mount over the bull. So when the 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 bull came into the village, all the men and women and all the animals and the cows they were all afraid and they were running away. But because these people in Vrindavan are all devotees, when they're afraid of anything, they always turn to Krishna. So they called out to Krishna, and they were saying, "Krishna, Krishna, save us." So Krishna saw all the animals, all the cows running away. He saw they were afraid, so he spoke to them and he told them, "Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid." So then Krishna came and stood in front of this bull, and he spoke to the bull very strongly. He told him, "You are the lowest of living entities." Why are you frightening all the people and the, the inhabitants of Gokula? And Gokula is the name of Vrindavan, right? It's part of Vrindavan. So it's a place where there's many cows. So Krishna spoke to the demon. He said, "What are you going to get? What benefit are you going to get by doing like this?" And then Krishna told the bull, "If you want to, if you want to fight with me, then I'm ready. I'll fight you." 
คือชานก็บอกว่าถ้าเกิดเธออยากจะต่อสู้กับฉันเนี่ยก็ได้ฉันพร้อมที่จะต่อสู้ So the demon bull became very angry by Krishna's words and Krishna just stood in front of the bull fearless he had to put his hand on the shoulder of his friend and looked at the bull So the bull came towards Krishna, very angry and a very angry mood. And as he came with his hoofs, he would dig the ground. And his eyes were all red and anger. And he pointed his long, sharp horns at Krishna. And came running at him like a thunderbolt. But Krishna just caught him by the horns, and he threw him away. He threw him away just like a big elephant would throw away a little elephant. The demon, the demon was sweating all over, and he began. He became very tired because Krishna had thrown him, so he became very tired, and he was sweating. But he came running again. And he came running at Krishna, very angry mood. And he was breathing very hard, heavy breath, as he came running towards Krishna. But Krishna just caught him by his horns and threw him to the ground. And when Krishna threw him to the ground, then the demon's horns bro broke. So then Krishna began to kick his body. Just like if you have a wet cloth on the ground, you squeeze it to get the water out. So Krishna was kicking this demon. Then the demon rolled over and he began to kick his legs and violently. And blood was coming out of his mouth and at the same time he was passing stool and urine. And his eyes fell out of their sockets, and in this way he died. So when this demon was killed by Krishna, all the demigods in the heaven they were watching and they threw flowers on Krishna. Krishna was already the life and soul of all the people of Vrindavan. 
กริชนาเนี่ยเป็นรวมชีวิตแล้วก็จิตใจของชาววินดาวัน And after he killed this bull, then he loved them all so much more. And then with Balaram, Lord Krishna and Balaram, they entered into the Vrindavan village, and all the people were so proud of them. Just like when a person does something wonderful, then all of his family and friends they they become very happy, very proud of him. So there's a beautiful uh, poem. There's a beautiful description about what happened after this. After Krishna killed this demon, there's a conversation between Radha and Krishna. And this conversation describes how Radha Kund and Shama Kund came into being. So after Krishna had killed the demon Arista, because he was a bull, the young Gopi girls they said to Krishna, "Oh." You better now. You don't come near us. You don't touch us because you've killed a bull. And the gopis told Krishna, "We know that he was a terrible demon." But he was a cow. He was a male cow. So you you have to you've done something sinful, and you have to do some atonement to purify yourself for this. So if you're going to purify yourself, you have to go and visit all the holy places in the three worlds. So Krishna said to the gopis, "Well, I don't have to go through the universe. I'm not going to go all over the universe. I'm. I will bring them all here." And when they come here, they will bring the holy water with them, and I'll take my bath here. So then Krishna put his heel on the ground. And he, he made some hole. He made some impression on the ground with the heel of his foot. And then immediately some water started to come, and Krishna said to the gopis, "This is the water of the Bhogavati River." This water is from the lower region of the universe, from the Patala region. So then Krishna said, "Now all you holy places, all of you, come here." 
ตอนนี้เนี่ยพวกเธอทุกคนมาที่นี่เลยมามาอาบน้ำในแม่น้ำของฉันนี่ And when Krishna said like that because Krishna is the supreme Lord so all the holy places they all appeared before Krishna แล้วพอ Krishna เนี่ยเรียกพวกเราแม่น้ำศักดิ์สิทธิ์ทั้งหลายมาเนี่ยพอพระ Krishna เนี่ยเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเวลาพระองค์ทรงเรียกเนี่ยพวกนั้นพวกแม่น้ำศักดิ์สิทธิ์ทั้งหลายเนี่ยจากทั่วโลกก็เดินทางมาหาพระองค์ Krishna said to the gopis he said you see these are all the holy places แล้วก็ Krishna ก็บอกว่าก็บอกกับพวกโกปีว่าเธอดูสินี่แหละเป็นแม่น้ำศักดิ์สิทธิ์ทั้งหมดเนี่ยมาแล้ว But the gopis they didn't believe them they said we don't believe that these are all the holy places So then, all these different people who had all appeared, they folded their hands, they joined their palms together, and offered respects. And one of them said, "I am the salt ocean," and another one said, "And I am the milk ocean." ที่มาในนามนะใช่ไหมคนก็มีเทพธิดาองค์หนึ่งเนี่ยขึ้นมาแล้วก็พนมมือบอกข้าเนี่ยเป็นมหาสมุทรน้ำเกลือแล้วก็ลงไปแล้วก็นึกว่าข้าเป็นมหาสมุทรน้ำนมแล้วก็ลง And then another person said I am the river Sona ในตัวอีกนางหนึ่งก็มาแบบนั้นอีกแล้วบอกว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นแม่น้ำโซน่า Then another one said I am the Sindhu river แล้วก็คนหนึ่งบอกว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นซินดู And another one said, "And I am the river Tamrapani." Another one said, "I am the holy place Puskar." Another one said, "I am the river Saraswati." And then some of them said, "And we are the Godavari, the Yamuna, and river rivers." And this person brings the water from the places of from the place of Prayag, where the Ganga meets the Yamuna. And they all brought the water from these holy places with them. So, so Lord Krishna took his bath in all these holy waters. So then Krishna said to the gopis, "I've made a nice lake here with all the water from the holy places." But you gopis, you've never done any religious duty. You didn't do anything to please Lord Brahma. So then Radharani spoke up, and she told all the gopis, "We will make a lake even more beautiful than Krishna's." And so all the gopis they all got, got together, and they saw that when Krishna had killed the demon Aristasura, he had this demon. He made a, a, a little hole. He made a ditch at the, on the west side of Krishna's pond. So they used that to make their pond. <laughs> แม่น้ำเนี่ยเขาก็เลยเริ่มเริ่มขุดใกล้ใกล้กับแม่น้ำของพระเจ้า And all the gopis they began to dig up the earth to make a lake for for them to because they wanted to make a better lake than Krishna แล้วพวกกูปีทั้งหลายเนี่ยก็เริ่มภารกิจโดยการขุด
And they, they were just using their hands and their bangles to break to bring out to do, to make the earth to take the break out the earth and to make the lake. So Krishna was very pleased to see them, that they made such a nice lake. So Krishna told them, he said, you can use the water from my pond to fill your pond. But Radharani said, no, no, we don't want to do that because your water is contaminated because you killed a cow. And Radharani said, myself and all the other gopis, we're going to bring water from the Manasa Ganga here and we'll bring billions of pots here and we'll fill the lake with the water from Manasa Ganga. In this way, our lake will become very famous all over the world. But then Lord Krishna, he told, he called for somebody to come. There was somebody who was the, the very dear friend of all the holy places. And that person appeared out of the water and he offered his respects to Radharani. So he was with tears in his eyes, he was praying to Radharani with great devotion and very humbly he prayed to her. And he, he said to Radharani that even Lord Brahma, who knows all the scriptures, he cannot understand your, qual your glories. You are so great. And even Lord Shiva and Lakshmi, they also cannot understand you. Only Krishna can understand you. And Lord Krishna feels he would like to make sure that you can wash away, he sees you sweating, so he's worried that you're, you're going to get tired. He doesn't want you to get too tired. And Lord Krishna is always thinking about giving pleasure to your lotus feet. He feels very great pleasure whenever he can satisfy your lotus feet. So on the order of Lord Krishna, all of the holy places, they have all come to live in this pond. So it would be very nice if you also feel satisfied with us and be kind upon us. 
แล้วมันจะเป็นการดีมากค่ะเกิดว่าท่านเนี่ยมีความพึงพอใจกับค่ะกับการรับใช้นี้ของค่ะ And if you allow us, we can also enter your pond and fill the pond. So Srimati Radharani was very pleased with the prayers, and she said, "All right, if this is your desire, you can also allow your waters to come in our lake." And all the holy places, they called, they told Radharani, our life is only successful, and when we can come to your pond. So Srimati Radharani looks at Krishna and she smiles, and she and she tells the holy places, "All right, then come. You come in our lake." And all the gopis, they were all happy. They all agreed that this was the right thing to do. So all the holy rivers and lakes from Shamakund, Krishna's lake, they all came. Also into the water of Radha Kund. So then, Lord Krishna gave a blessing to Radharani. He said, "May your lake become even the most famous in the world, more famous than my lake." And Krishna told Radharani, "I will always come and bathe here." And he told her, "Your lake is as dear to me." As you are to me. Then Radharani told Krishna, "And I will bathe in your lake, even if you kill hundreds of demons like Arista Sura." And Radharani gave a blessing. She said, "Anybody who, anyone who has devotion for this lake, and who bathes here, they will become very dear to me." So that night, Lord Krishna and all the gopis and Radharani, they all had rasa dance. Krishna is like a cloud. And Radharani is like a brilliant flash of lightning. And so in this way, they they brought wonderful pastimes to this place, which is now known as Radha Kund. So it was after this that Narada Muni went to see Kamsa. And 
So Narada Muni, he is, he's able to see, he can see demigods, he can, in, he can see the Supreme Lord anytime. But Kam, Krishna, uh, Narada Muni went to see Kamsa, although he's a big demon. And he's, of course, Kamsa also saw Krishna, but he didn't respect Krishna. He didn't get any benefit from seeing Krishna because he didn't see him with pure with pure vision. But anybody who gets to associate with a pure devotee, they get benefit. Just by seeing the devotee, he makes advancement. So Narada Muni wanted that Krishna would come quick to kill Kamsa. So Narada Muni came to tell Kamsa, he told Kamsa, he said, you know, you're going to be killed by the eighth son of Vasudev. And that eighth son of Vasudev is Krishna, and he's alive. Vasudev tricked you. Vasudev told you that his eighth child was a daughter, but actually it was a boy. That daughter, that was the, sh the child of Yashoda, the wife of Nanda Maharaj. But Vasudev changed his son for the daughter, so you were tricked. Both Krishna and Balaram are the children of Vasudev. But Vasudev was afraid. Oh no, Vasudev was afraid, so he hid them in Vrindavan out of your way. So you couldn't find them. So Krishna and Balaram, they've both been living with Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan. And all the demons, all your friends who you sent to Vrindavan to kill the children, they were killed by Krishna and Balaram. So when Kamsa heard this, he got very angry, he got his sword out and he was going to kill Vasudev for cheating him. But Narada Muni told him, no, no, you're, you're not going to be killed by Vasudev. No need to kill Vasudev. You should try and kill Krishna and Balaram. Krishna 
So anyway, Kamsa put Vasudev and Devaki, he got them in chains and he put them in his prison. So then Kamsa called for another friend of his, a demon called Kesi. Uh, Kesi is in the form of a horse and he, and he called him and he told him, he said, I want you to go to Vrindavan immediately. I want you to go there and kill Krishna and Balaram. Actually, Kamsa was telling him to go to Vrindavan to be killed by Krishna and Balaram. And in that way, he'll get liberation. Then Kamsa called for his elephant trainer. And he called for the wrestlers. He has some special wrestlers called Chanura and Mustika. And he called them to come. So then he told them, he said, in Nanda Maharaj's place in Vrindavan, there are these two brothers, Krishna and Balaram. They're really the sons of Vasudev and they're supposed to kill me. So Kamsa said, I want to make an arrangement for a wrestling match and the people will come from all, all the parts of the country for the festival and we'll have a big festival and I want you to fight with these two boys. And you can kill these two boys in the wrestling match. So, so wrestling matches were popular even 5,000 years ago. <laughs> so Kam Kamsa invited a lot of people to come and attend the match. And he told the, the trainer of the elephant, he said, you also bring this elephant. Elephant's name was Kuvalaya, Kuvalaya Pida. And you keep this elephant at the gate of the wrestling stadium. And when Krishna and Balaram come there, then the elephant can kill them. So you see, this Kamsai was arranging so many different ways to kill Krishna and Balaram. And he told his friends also they should worship Lord Shiva and they should offer sacrifice, kill animals to Lord Shiva and in this way they will get the blessings. So the demons, they like to worship Lord Shiva by killing animals. 
แต่ทางพวกมันเนี่ยเขาจะชอบวิธีการบูชาเราบูชาพระศิวะโดยการแบบฆ่าสัตว์ไปด้วย So k a m s e p was what this kind of person. He so he had some people do all this for him on his behalf. k a m s e p เนี่ยเป็นบุคคลประเภทนี้ที่เขาจะคอยมีคนช่วยเขาในการทำกิจกรรมแบบนี้ And then k a m s e p called for his friend or somebody he knew named Akrura, who was from the family of Lord Krishna, means the Yadu dynasty. แต่ k a m s e p เนี่ยก็เรียกอาคูระมาราซึ่งอาคูระเนี่ยเป็นบุคคลในครอบครัวยาดู So Kam Kamsa told a k r u r a he said you're my good friend and I have some special service for you I want you to do a special service I want you to go to Vrindavan and bring these two boys Krishna and Balaram bring them to Mathura แล้วคำสันเนี่ยก็เชิญอาคูระเนี่ยมาคุยแล้วก็บอกว่าอ And I have a very nice new chariot for you. You can take this chariot, and you go there and bring these two boys from Vrindavan. You bring them here. Tell them we've arranged a nice festival. We want them to come. And Kamsa told a k r u r a he said, "Yeah, I have a plan that I want to kill these two boys." He said we have the big elephant, k u v a l a y a p i d a and if he can kill them, then that will be good. But if he can't kill them, then we have the wrestling match, and the wrestlers will kill them. The k a m s a ก็บอกถึงแผนการที่ตนเองได้เตรียมไว้ว่าตอนแรกจะมีเตรียมช้างไว้เหยียบแล้วแล้วถ้าเกิดว่าช้างทำไม่สำเร็จเนี่ยในการแข่งขันเนี่ยก็จะมีนักมวยปั้มที่มากด้วยฝีมือที่จะสังหารเขา And after these two boys are killed, then I'm going to kill Vasudev, and I'm going to kill Nanda Maharaj also because they are supporters. And I'm going to kill my father also, Ugrasena, and I'm going to kill his brother Devaka. Because they don't support me, they're my enemies. So I'm just going to kill them. But I have some good friends. I have some good friends. Jarasandha, he is the father of my wife, and he is very powerful demon. He's my good friend. And I have another good friend, d w a v i d a He's a monkey, and he's very powerful and very strong. He's also my good friend. So with their help, it will be easy to kill all the other kings, and we'll conquer the planet, and I will rule the whole planet. And I have other demon friends also. And when I fight against the, the kings and the supporters of the demigods, they will all help me fight these people. So I request a k r u r a I request you. You go to Vrindavan immediately, and you please find Krishna and Balaram. And get them to come here to Mathura. 
แค่ไปที่บริดาบันแล้วก็เอาเด็กสองคนนั้นเนี่ยมาร่วมงานให้ได้แล้วก็อาจจะทำตามแผน Yeah, I told them, tell them a Mathura is very beautiful city, and we're going to have wrestling match. It will be good. Please come. So Akrura, Akrura, he's he he's not a supporter of Kamsa, but he knew Kamsa was the king. So he thought, "Comes as a king, I have to do what he says." So Akrura told Kamsa. He said, "Well, he said you have your plans. He said you may be successful, you may not. He said it depends on your karma. Man proposes." And God disposes. So you can make nice plans. That's okay, but. You have to see what Krishna wants. If you have to see what the Supreme Lord wants, you may not be successful. So you have to get the support of the. Material energy. Everything has to be in your favor. In order for your plans to be successful. Sometimes you may be successful, and sometimes you will not. So Akrura told Kamsa, "I will." Follow your instruction. I will go to Vrindavan and find Krishna and Balaram, and bring them here to Mathura. So in this way, Kamsa then went into his own chamber, and Akrura went back to his home. And this is the end of the chapter. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes, g u r m a s from Shaya Mataji. Oh. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. O glory to Sri Rupa Bhuban. Khi mi lương thi chay ya phang salu phong Maharaj ni ni ya cha phuk sa. Bởi thi thi cha lau hay a cha phang na ha chui tai hay ma la phang duoi. Đó là mi sau bốn phang bát thi đa. คือเขาพยายามจะสอบถามการสวดมนต์ของพี่โดยที่เขาบอกว่าเขาสวดมนต์วันละยี่สิบหกรอบแล้วก็พยายามบอกว่าพี่ผิดที่ไม่สวดมนต์ให้ครบสิบหกรอบในตอนเช้าซึ่งส่วนตัวของพี่เนี่ยพี่สวดครบสิบหกรอบทุกวันแต่ว่าอาจจะไม่ได้สวดเสร็จภายในตอนเช้าแต่ว่าสวดครบนะคะแล้วก็คําถามที่พี่อยากจะถามมหาลัยก็คือว่าในกรณีเนี้ยค่ะคือสาวกคนอื่นเนี่ยสามารถสอบถามสถานะของเราได้ไหมแล้วการที่เขาพูดอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเหมือนกับเป็นการดูหมิ่นการทําสัตนะของเราหรือเปล่าแล้วก็จะถือว่าเป็นอาบัติไหมอะค่ะอืมค่ะขอบคุณค่ะฮาริกิชนะอ so guru mara she she want your advice there is one devotee who is asking Who is asking her that 
how many rounds you shan, what time you shan, something like that. And she said she shan every day 16 rounds, but not uh, complete in the morning. So, some day she, she couldn't complete in the morning, something like that. But this devotee, he shan every day 26 rounds, and he finished chanting in the morning. So he was like checking on her that uh, uh, about her sadhana and her chanting, this kind of thing. So she wants to know that uh, how should she deal with him? And is that an offensive to ask about someone else's sadhana or something like that? Well, it's not really his position. I don't know who this devotee was, but... You know, it's not really his duty to do like that, unless, unless, the, unless the devotee, unless Shasha has accepted him as, a, as her authority and has a, as a recognized instructor, mentor, then he has no right to talk so much to her about her sadhana. No, sir. เราบอกว่าไม่รู้ว่าสาวคนนี้เนี่ยเป็นใครอ่าเราก็แต่ว่าโดยทั่วไปแล้วเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าพี่ชายาเนี่ยไม่
Yes, Guru Maharaj, I, 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 I will not contact him anymore. Thank you for your advice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Next question from Yuna Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, why uh, does Lord Jagannatha have uh, such a special uh, standard of worshipping? Why does Lord Jagannath have such a special standard of worship? Well, Lord Jagannath yes. is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he can choose for himself what standard he wants, to, how he wants to be worshipped. Lord Jagannath is Supreme Lord. He's independent. You know, he doesn't have to follow any rules or regulations. If he wants to be worshipped in that way, then he can he he can do it. But Lord Jagannath is especially inclined to devotion. He likes devotees, the devotion, that's very important to him. And there were great devotees, many great devotees all surrendered to Lord Jagannath and they got the mercy of Lord Jagannath from all different walks of life. Some people were Muslim and some were Christian and some were meat eaters and fish eaters but somehow they got the mercy of Lord Jagannath. So the worship of Lord Jagannath has been going on for more than a thousand years, many, many, th many thousands of years, and so it's very special. So we just try to develop the mood of devotion, love for Lord Jagannath. Love, love means service. When you love someone, when you love Lord Jagannath, you will want to serve him. And in the beginning we don't have love, but we can do service for Jagannath. And gradually by serving him we will develop love for him. Yeah. Yes, Guru. Um, I can see uh, this new devotee, a newcomer. He he have a question. Yes. Ah, uh, 
Ramesh. His question is, four type of people who will not surrender to Krishna, uh, who are they? Four kinds of people. First of all, people in distress. And then people who are in search of some material need, like wealth. No. Uh, oh, people who don't surrender. They want the four people who don't surrender. Yes. Oh, the four people who don't surrender. Well, there's uh, the people who are like the, the mudha, like a donkey. They work very hard. Just... just <laughs> Uh, and they say, if we ask them to come to temple, they say, no, I have no time, I have to work. And we say, well, you know, when you get spare time, come to temple, they say, no, I have to work, I have to make money, why? I have to make money to eat. And they say, well, we come to temple, we have prasadam. And they say, no, no, I have to work. And then another one is the Naradama, the lowest of men, that he's born in a good family. He's born in maybe a Brahmana family. He's brought up in a good family, good education, good background, good culture, but he doesn't want to be a devotee. And then the third person, is uh, one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. They try to understand the scriptures by mental speculation instead of by hearing from the acharyas in the disciplic succession. <laughs> And then the fourth person is the one who is an atheist or a blasphemer or an offender to devotees. So those are all four people, and they're not pious people, they're all sinful people. Yes? Okay. Yes, good. Uh, next question from Raja Surya Prabhu. Thank you, Sahaja Maharaj. This is some humble questions. Thank you for good class, Maharaj. It's uh, always good to hear the divine appearance of Shamakun and Radhakun. Uh, today I have a little doubt about um, this Radhakun <laughs> and the next of instruction on the verse number 10. It is said that indeed those who execute devotional service on the back of the Radha Kuna are the most fortunate people in the universe. And it didn't say about Shamakun, only say Radha Kuna. And I, today we hear that Radha Rani said to Krishna that even though you kill hundreds of Arishta Sura, we will always come and take baths in the Shamakun. And why only Radha Kuna is more? 
it's like a, some kind of discrimination between Radha Krishna and Shama. Can you? Uh, About Krishna said. Radha. Krishna said. Krishna said also, Krishna said that her water would be more famous than Shamakund. Krishna told Radharani, they said, your lake will be more famous than my lake. Okay. We heard today it's the same water. The water in Radhakund is the same water in Shamakund. It's all the water from all the holy places. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, there is one question from Sri Devi Madhuri. She Devi. put in the chat box, Guru Maharaj. Oh, Maybe yes. I can ask. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, she is saying, like, uh, what about the sadhana chart? that we have to submit in the Bhakti Sastri because they are not our Diksha Guru. So in the end, we have to report our morning sadhana, something like that. So in this case, how we do, uh, how should, yeah. What is this for? for uh, so how about that? Are, are you having, that, do you have to do that? Do you have to Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have to. Sadhana. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Well, they just, they, they just want to make sure you're doing some sadhana. You know, some people do sadhana in the morning, some do it in the evening. That's not, not, nothing wrong. Yeah, not a big problem. You know, nobody's going to check up on you. They just, they just want to make sure, they just want you to think about doing sadhana, you know, to make sure you do sadhana. You don't you don't like people to know your sadhana? What's the problem? I don't understand. Mm, Madhuri, she, you want to speak? She did. Hare Krishna, Sri Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Yes, my thank obeisance. you very much for a very nice class. Actually, my question is: in the sadhana sheet, it's only about morning program. It's about how many, uh, when did you complete your last 16th round? When you did your first 16th round? What time you woke up? What time you did your Mangala Aradi? And then uh, there is something called late. If it's uh, after 4.30 means you must say late, 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 like that. So this uh, that sometimes bothers me because I'm not always able to fulfill 4.30 a.m. Mangala Aradi. I'm living in Malaysia. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, I, I, because it doesn't ask about boga offering, it doesn't ask about other worship, other things, only about very lopsided towards monthly, uh, towards the morning program, and five marks are awarded for the sadhana sheets. Uh, so it is being checked by course coordinator and those running the program. So I, I know it's important, the morning program, but every single day for uh, every single day, I may not be able to fulfill all my three RDs uh, according to the time. That is why it bothers me and I'm, uh, I feel very upset and very worried because uh, it's not about all the sadhana, it's only about the morning program sadhana. Even though we complete all our chanting, 16 rounds uh, minimum, uh -huh. but the morning program sadhana is quite hard for me to fulfill every single day. 
because we have to give the date every single day what we did. So I'm not able to fulfill maybe every single day. There are days I will slip up. I may not be able to do well, it. Well, don't worry about it. You know, it's not a big deal. You know, you're a householder. Of course, you're not going to keep it up every day. And you have so many other commitments, you know. You have a family and so many other things which you're doing. You don't get so worried about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's not a big issue. You know. I mean, certainly devotees, all, they'll all understand. You know, you're, 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 you're being very honest. You know, a lot of devotees wouldn't be so honest. They'd just put you, 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 you know, <laughs> and they wouldn't tell the truth. But you're, you're being very honest and, you know, they, they just want to, they just want to get people thinking about it, you know. But don't take, don't take it too seriously. I mean, Prabhupada himself, you know, he, he said he used to chant four rounds in the morning and then four rounds in, after breakfast and four rounds after lunch and then four rounds in the evening. And Prabhupada knew also in family life, you're not going to be very regulated. It's definitely, it's not so possible that you can be so perfectly regulated in family life. You're living, you know, in your own home with your family, and your family are not devotees. But, you know, it, it's, it's commendable that you're trying to be a devotee, that you're doing devotional service and you're doing this Bhakti Shastri. It's all to your credit. So don't worry about it. You know, it's not a big crime. <laughs> you know, we, under, we understand it's going to be difficult for you, you know. There are going to be things, difficult things, you know. So don't, don't worry about it. I, I can also bring that up to the uh, managers, to the people, and bring that to their attention. It's a good point, actually, that there's a lot more to sadhana than just the morning. You know, yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Thank you so much. I pray at your lotus feet, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. With so much love and gratitude to you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, are there any other questions? Yes, Guru Maharaj, got two more. Okay. Uh, next will be from Bharat Prabhu. Bharat Prabhu, yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, my question is uh, regarding uh, Krishna's plan. So uh, I, I planned something and that might work. So that means uh, Krishna has approved my plan. But in the work, what I am doing, if there are anything which is causing me uh, in terms of uh, uh, principles, uh, basic principles of Krishna consciousness, if that is getting affected, what should I do with that work? Uh, should I go ahead and continue with that work or should I uh, stop doing work which is impacting my Krishna consciousness? Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, well, it's difficult for me to give you a reply, Prabhu, because it's not very clear everything, you know. You, have, you didn't tell me exactly what's going on in your life and what kind of problems are there or what issues are there. So it's not... But generally, you know, you, you, you have to, you know, make adjustments sometimes. Some things make it difficult sometimes. It's difficult to uh, do our devotional service. Some things are not supporting, not convenient for our devotional service. But you have to consider what your priorities are and what your responsibilities are. You know, we don't encourage devotees to be irresponsible and to give up their duties and so on. Not... Uh, not uh, spontane, not immediately anyway. You know, you have to consider very carefully and very, and you have to take, con you know, take advice maybe from senior devotees around you who know you better and who are familiar with you. 
and familiar with your situation, then they can give you proper advice, what you need to do and what you shouldn't do and what you should avoid. You know? You are, are you a married man? Uh, no, Maharaj. I'm not at night. Oh, really? Uh, where are you living? Uh, I'm, I'm living in India, Bangalore. Oh, okay. So, uh, just to give an input, so we, I mean, the work, what I do, uh, most of the times it would be uh, something like uh, taking up the time, early morning hours, and uh, which is affecting my sadhana, and late night I have to work. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, basically, it's taking me out of Krishna consciousness. So, wherein like attending Mangala Arpis or going to Guru Puja, um, having prasadam, all those things get affected. Every um, day? Affected. Every day? Uh, I mean, five days, five to six days in a week. Oh. So, then you have to consider, are you able to find other work? Are you able to do some other work? You see, that's important. Now, of course, everybody needs to have some kind of job. Now, at the present time, you know, with the economic crisis and the pan, 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 pandemic situation, the economic situation is not good and the job market is not good. So it's a very difficult time to try to change your job and to move into a new line might be very difficult at this particular time. So you definitely want to consider carefully before you do it, you know, you don't want to just uh, impulse, you don't want to do it impulsively. You want to be very careful, you want to be sure that you can find other work and that you're able to support yourself and meet your needs before you make some change in your lifestyle. Because you know, definitely you have to maintain yourself. You need a job, you need to have some income, you need to have to do something. Of course, you're a single man, so that's an advantage, it makes it a bit easier. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, we have last question from Vaishnavi Mataji, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisance. Uh, I was thinking, Guru Maharaj, uh, this is uh, the last Rasa dance, right, Guru Maharaj. After this, Narada Muni uh, went to Kamsa and told, and after this, Krishna will go. Yes, Krishna is going to go to Mathura. But there's Casey Demon, we still have the Casey Demon going to come. As we heard, Kamsa told Casey Demon. To, I'm sorry, we, we lost you. We lost your voice for a while there, Vaishnavi. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Are you able to hear now? Yes. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, Narada Muni, uh, Kamsa didn't get any benefit by seeing Narada Muni. I was thinking, uh, because he was not purified, sometimes they tell like, even if we have the Tilak and the, the devotees go, and some people see the Tilak and the devotees, they get some benefit. I was wondering how to understand this, both of this. And then my another thing is, uh, uh, is this the last Rasa dance and after this Krishna will go to Madura? Because, not, uh, yeah, like that. Yes, this is, well, there's going to be one more chapter. We're going to hear about Casey, proud Casey, because Kamsa had told Casey Demon to go to Vrindavan and try to kill Krishna and Balaram. So Krishna will kill Casey Demon. And then also Vyomasura, another demon, Krishna will deal with, and then he will go to Mathura. Arjuna? Yes. 
็คือคําสาจรนสังหารแล้วใช่ไหมคะก็อย่างที่เราอ่านไปในช่วงสุดท้ายของบทนี้นะคะก็บอกว่ายังมีมาเทชิยูที่คําสาเนี่ยส่งไปหลังจากนั้นก็ยังจะมีมาในตัวหนึ่งอยู่ที่จะโดนสังหารนะคะในลักษณะก็จะมีมาเพิ่มเติมที่จะต้องที่จะโดนสังหารแล้วก็ใกล้จะจบ And then you asked, did Kamsa get any benefit seeing the Radha Muni? Yes, he got benefit. And you can see, you can see the Radha Muni. He the Radha Muni is business is to speed up the appearance of Lord Krishna and to bring up, bring about more quickly the killing of Kamsa. So that was the benefit. He was killed quicker. <laughs> แล้วแล้วก็ถามว่าแล้วเอ่อคําสานะได้ประโยชน์อะไรหลังจากที่เขาเนี่ยได้ครบหาสมาคมกับนารัตมุนีผู้ที่เป็นตาวกใช่มั
โอเคเอ่อมาตจีก็ถามว่านะคะพอดีมาตจีเนี่ยมีญาติเนี่ยโทรมาแล้วก็บอกว่าเธอโอ้ยพวกเราเนี่ยไม่ต้องทําบุญอะไรแล้วเพราะว่าสิ่งที่เธอเนี่ยทำให้พวกเราเนี่ยลุกพ้นไปด้วยในตัวเพราะฉะนั้นพวกเราไม่ต้องทําอะไรนะพอเขาบอกเฉยเนี่ยมาตจีก็รู้สึกว่าเฮ้ยคือฉันยังไม่ได้ทําอะไรมากเลยแล้วฉันก็ยังไม่ได้เป็นดวงวิญญาณผู้หลุดพ้นเลยแล้วฉันจะทําให้เธอเนี่ยหลุดพ้นได้ยังไงใช่ไหมมาจีก็รู้สึกเครียดมากมารู้ว่าจะตอบพวกเขาไปยังไงดีเสด็จกุลมาแล้วก็ตอบว่าในลักษณะนี้เนี่ยคือเราไม่จำเป็นต้องไปเครียดกับสิ่งที่เขาพูดมาแบบนี้ก็บอกเขาว่าฉันก็พยายามทําอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นเดี๋ยวฉันจะแบบว่าขอพรให้เธอด้วยนะก็คือก็บอกแค่นี้ไปแล้วก็จบแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเขาเนี่ยมีความสนใจกับสิ่งที่เราปฏิบัติเนี่ยเขาก็สามารถถามเราหรือว่าไปปฏิบัติได้แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าในเชิงที่เขาไม่ได้สนใจในวิธีทางในการปฏิบัติอย่างเงี้ยเราก็ปล่อยเขาไปได้แล้วเราก็ขอพรให้เขาอะไรอย่างเงี้ยโอเค Thank you very much, Archana, for Thank your you, translation. Archana. Thank all the devotees for listening and for your questions and participation. And we pray all for all of you to have a safe and healthy week. I hope to see you all next week. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu Padki. Thank you, Guru Guru Hare Krishna.